again. Steve Bartlett with you today. It's awesome to have this opportunity. I hope you'll, you'll have a manual by now for sure. We're on lesson number six, sharing your testimony. And I want you to know something that there's nothing more powerful to inspire someone to believe, to believe in God, than you sharing your story of what God did in your life. And I, I have written here at the top of our outline today that evangelism is sharing two stories. It's sharing your story, what Jesus has done for you, and it's sharing his story, what Jesus has done for humanity. And again, I've mentioned this before. For many, many people, they look at the Bible as a 2,000-year-old book that just sort of sits on the shelf and doesn't have any real meaning for today. But you know what your testimony is going to do? It's going to take God out of the distant past. And it's going to take God out of this distant, starry future out there. I've heard this so many times on the streets. Well, I believe that God did this. Or I believe one day God's going to do that. Hey, wait a minute, man. The Bible tells me that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I don't celebrate a God that did some things 2,000 years ago and that hasn't been heard of since. And I don't celebrate a God who one day out there in the future is going to make everything right. The God I serve is alive today, and He's moving, and He's active, and He'll work in your life the same way that he did in Bible days, and the same way that he'll do when anyone calls upon his name. And see, this is what our testimony does. You know, it's so amazing. I, again, I run into so many people that are part of different religions, and they want to talk about what their God did. Who knows how long ago? Let me tell you something. Jesus is alive today. He's resurrected, and he's seated at the right hand of the Father. And I love the apostolic thinking that I find in the Word of God. In Acts 4.33, the Bible says, With great many signs and wonders, the apostle gave witness of the resurrection of Jesus. It's the signs and the wonders. It's the stories. It's the miracles. It's the answers to prayer that literally proves Jesus is raised from the dead. And again, for me, could you imagine four years ago, stage four cancer, literally almost 18 months, just, just there in my house, I mean, for, for months and months and months, the farthest I ever went was from the bedroom to the kitchen, from the kitchen to a bathroom, back to a bedroom. That was my entire life. And God, through his mercy and his power and his glory, has restored me to health. And see, this is what I want you to see. It's not just a salvation testimony. It's a healing testimony. It's an answer to prayer that's a testimony. It's how God has restored your life in some area. I run into people all the time and say, well, I was never a drug addict. And I was never, you know, some wild person. I don't have a testimony. Are you kidding me? Every single one of us has real answers to prayer. God has come and done incredible things in our lives. Every one of us has a testimony to share with somebody else. I want to give you a few principles here about sharing your testimony. The truth is this lesson is going to be one of the very shortest ones I do with you on our video because you're the one that's going to do all the work in this lesson because you need to think about your story. What has God done? What miracles have you seen? What answers to prayer have you had? My wife and I were talking about this the other day. She's getting ready to teach a whole bunch of people on divine healing. And we were just recounting the miracles with our children, the miracle with Christopher, the miracles that Lauren has seen, the different times that God has answered supernaturally our prayers and our needs. Do you understand? We could go for days and tell you about the goodness of God. It's not theory. It's not just Bible stories. These are our stories 
of what really happened in our lives. And I'll tell you what, if you'll learn to share your story, your testimony with other people, you're going to become effective in evangelism. Amen? So let's look at our outline. Your story. These are the main points I want you to get. And I'm going to just read a couple of lines here to you. Listen to what this says. The personal testimony is the most natural and flexible witnessing tool available to all Christians. One of the things I really discourage people from doing is just memorizing these gospel plans. Man, they don't need your gospel plan. God didn't send some kind of a, a gospel plan into the world. He, spent, he sent spirit-filled people armed with love and compassion and real stories into the world. That's what the world needs to hear. Some of us have memorized the four spiritual laws, and we've memorized how to be born again, and we've memorized all these different gospel presentations. Well, I don't want to put any of that down, but I just want you to know Jesus never had some spiel. Jesus had love and compassion, and he had a real story about a loving God who cared about his people. And I want you to know something. If, if you would begin to use your testimony, you could present it to anybody in any situation. That's why I say it's natural and flexible. My story is just that. It's my story. Man, I could tell, I could testify about almost anything. I used to be addicted to cigarettes. I got set free in a day by the power of God, something I couldn't break off of my life in years and years and years. I cried out to Jesus. He gave me the power to change. I've never smoked one cigarette in 35 years. Don't tell me God can't set you free. He did it to me in a day. It's the same thing with getting high and doing drugs and, and getting drunk and all the crazy things that God has set me free from, can I tell you there's a God that answers by power and he gives us the power to be his sons. And I can tell anybody about the miracle working power of God. He's answered prayers. He's given me revelations and knowledge that I didn't have. He's done so many miracles for us. You know, when I was dead broke as the pastor of a church, I had been in the pastorate for more than two and a half years, and we didn't have a penny in our name, in our building fund. And all of a sudden, one day, God challenged me to believe him for a miracle. And this is my story. In a matter of like six weeks, God gave us $325,000. How do you go from dead broke over years to $325,000 to buy a building at an auction? Don't tell me God won't provide for you. We need to think differently. See, my story is just that. It's my story. God is a faithful God. But people don't know that unless we tell our story. When I had cancer, his power set me free and gave me new life. I want you to think about that for a minute. Could I testify about healing? Could I testify about miracles? Could I testify about the faithfulness and the goodness of God? You better believe it. And could I testify to anybody in almost any situation? Of course I can. Because I've walked with God, and I've seen his goodness, and I've seen his faithfulness. I have a story. I have a testimony. So do you. But you're going to have to sort of draw it out. Again, I run into so many Christians that tell me, I don't have a testimony. Yes, you do. You just haven't thought about it. And I'll go farther and say, there are people everywhere that need to hear your story. Now, I've listed some points here, and I want you to think about it. This is the easiest way to evangelize because it's your story. You don't have to memorize all this stuff. Just tell them what happened. I don't have to try to memorize something I've been through. It's imprinted in my heart and in my mind. It's real to me, and I can make it real to others. So can you. 
Now, secondly, it has a natural authority that people will respect because it's an eyewitness testimony. Man, I'm not asking them to believe something that was written 2,000 years ago, at least not yet. <laughs> I know that there are many people that have all kinds of objections, and they're going to fight and say, I don't believe that book. Well, let me tell you something. The God who wrote this book is the God I'm telling you about, and this is what he did for me. And I saw it with my own eyes when I've seen healing miracles. Now, don't tell me God doesn't heal. I'm not going to buy it because I've seen the miracle working power of God. It's my story. I've seen miracle after miracle after miracle. I've seen babies come out of comas. I've seen people that were shot come out of comas. I've seen people that were dying of sclerosis of the liver get a brand new liver. I've seen people healed of cancer. I've seen instant miracles. I've seen jaws come back that were that were just degenerating and completely wiped out. A woman one time we were going door to door in Tulsa got an instant miracle in her back. She had had surgery, and she was an invalid. She was a cripple. And we go and lay hands on this woman. About two hours later, I get a phone call from a neighbor that wants to know what we did to the woman. Eighty-something people that night committed their lives to Christ. At the meeting we had, they saw the power of God. You know what my story is? God is faithful, and I've seen it firsthand. I'm not telling you about some healing evangelist on the other side of the world. These are stories that I've seen. And I'll bet you every one of you, if you were to sit down, I've got a couple of sheets of paper here that I want you to fill out. Take a pen, take a pencil, and write out what you've experienced. You're going to have a testimony that will make God come alive to others. Amen? Listen to this. My testimony is unarguable. You can't argue with me about what I've been through. Many, they'll argue about the Bible. They'll argue about, you know, this, that, or the other in the Bible. How do you argue with a guy who's been through something? Listen to this. They may have objections to your Bible, but your story is unarguable. This is what they might not buy it or believe it, but they're not, they can't argue with it. That's important. And it takes God out of the distant past or the distant future. And it brings him in to the here and the now. And that's exactly what we're after. Again, the God I serve is alive today. And he's listening to people's prayers. And he's a God of love and compassion. And he wants to touch our lives if we'll just open our heart to him. And what God did for me, he'll do for somebody else. That's my story. Now, I've listed here three different kinds of testimonies. This is on the bottom of page 40. There's a salvation testimony. And I've given you, if you look in your, in your manual on page 42, an outline for you to fill this out. This is your homework. I want you to write out your salvation testimony. What was your life like before you became a Christian? What happened when you trusted Christ or when you called out to Jesus? How did you actually get saved? What happened? And then how has Christ changed your life since then? Right now on our website, you'll see there's a place for you to find the testimonies. I have like, I don't know, 30 or more testimonies of people that are sharing how they became a Christian. It's right there on the Ambassadors for Christ dot net website. Look at their testimonies and you can see how you can share a testimony very similarly. Okay, in addition, a recovery testimony. This is a, a story of how Jesus helped you at some point of need in your life. Maybe it's Maybe it's overcoming addiction. Maybe it's overcoming depression. Maybe it's how God healed your body. These are all ways that God restores and our lives are recovered. Every single one of us doesn't just have a salvation testimony, but there's a time in our lives, a point in our life, where God has supernaturally intervened, and I want you to take the time on page 43 of your 
of your outline here, there is an outline of a recovery. This could be a healing. This could be a, a setting you free of some kind of addiction. I mean, I run into more guys that have been addicted to pornography, women too for that matter, who are nothing but sexual reprobates that God sets them free just like that. When they truly get born again, they have to renew their mind. How many of you know God isn't going to instantly renew your mind? That's a process you're going to have to get actively involved in. But I'm here to tell you right now, there is no sin, no bondage, nothing that anybody has gotten involved in where the power of God is not sufficient and able to transform and set them free. And this is where you're going to talk about what God did for you. And the other thing that I use sometimes is an eyewitness testimony, which is a story of what Jesus did in someone else's life that is very similar to the person that I'm talking to. I was never a heroin addict, but I remember a friend of mine, Ray Morales, who was a heroin addict for, for just years and years and years and years. And when I talk to a person, I'll tell them how God set me free from drugs. Many times they're going to say, well, you don't understand. What I was addicted to was heroin. And I'll share Ray's testimony because Ray and I worked together for a number of years on the streets of Chicago. Ray has gone on to be with Jesus now, but I want you to know something, what God did for Ray. Ray was set free from heroin like that in an instant. He was in jail one night. He had track marks literally about an inch and a half up both arms and down the back of both legs. And when Ray called on God to set him free, there were no 12 steps. There was no methadone program to wean him off of heroin. He was instantly set free like that. Never, never had the jonesing or whatever you want to call it for another fix. Simply set free by the power of God. That's what happened in my life with, with, with getting high and getting drunk and doing things. I'm here to tell you, God is awesome and the power of God is real. So these are all different ways that you could share your story. Now on page 41, I've given you some real basic guidelines. The first one is just keep it true and, and stick to the truth. Don't try to make something up. Just be real with people. I've actually had Christians that I, I've, I've been witnessing on, uh, or on the streets with, and they'll tell somebody a story, and I'll tell them afterwards, man, that was, I, I didn't know that about you. And they said, oh, man, that, that's really not true about me. I just I wanted to tell them something. Come on. Time out. Let's be real. Let's be true. The Holy Spirit is a spirit of truth. We don't need to embellish something or, or make up something that isn't true. Be real with people. Be honest. Because that's what's real and that's what's true. And again, stick to the truth. Keep it short. You can share your testimony. I put here two to three minutes. If you go four or five and, and you've got their attention, that won't matter. But keep it short. People don't want to hear some long, drawn-out thing when they're sitting on a park or a park bench or on the street. And keep the emphasis on what Jesus did for you. See, this is what I want to testify. It's not about my past. It's about God's goodness and God's power, God's ability to set me free. Number four, or letter D on your outline, don't use a bunch of religious words that, that people aren't going to understand. I've actually heard people say things like, I was washed in the blood. Well, come on, man. That's going to freak anybody out. We're not some weird cultic group baptizing people in blood. I've heard people say, the Holy Ghost wrecked me. What on earth does that mean to an unbeliever? Man, let's get serious. Let's get specific. Let's use words. Even born again. It can sometimes people, you're going to have to explain what you're saying. Don't use religious words that people aren't going to understand. I actually heard somebody one time get up and testify and say, Man, I am saved, I am sanctified, and I am fire baptized. Now you're sharing that to a bunch of unbelievers? They're not going to understand what that means. Come on, use some, use some words that are going to make a difference to them. 
And, and look at letter E here. Be positive and upbeat as you share your story. Have you ever heard a testimony that was such a bummer that, that even the Christians were bummed out? We ran a mission on the streets of Chicago for years and years and years, and I opened it up for people in our church to come and testify, and even people outside of the church once we knew they were really born again. And man, I heard some testimonies that it was almost the mercy of God that I put a five-minute period on it because they were bumming everybody out in the whole room. Man, get happy. Share the goodness of God and how God came through for you. And then lastly here, and I don't even know how to define this. I just put this in your outline. Don't be weird. <laughs> some Christians share some really weird stories. Come on, stick to the point. How did you get saved? Why did you get saved? What did Jesus do? What happened when he came into your life? If you'll stick to those things, it's going to be an awesome testimony. And I love to say, close your testimony with this sentence. And this is just to lead them into the gospel. Can I tell you how something like this could happen to you? That's a great transition. So again, if you look at your outlines here, you've got a couple of pages the first one is your salvation testimony. The next one is a recovery or a healing or a deliverance testimony. But look at the bottom of the page on page 43. I want you to actually do this. List the miracles, the blessings, the answer to prayer, the divine interventions that you've experienced or that in your family you've experienced. See, these are the creative ways to make God real to the people that you're going to run into as you start sharing your faith and doing evangelism. And I want you to know that every miracle you've seen, every answer to prayer, every time God has come through for you, you now have a story to go and share with someone else. And again, lastly, let me just say this. Realize that to the religious to the Muslims, to the Jews, to the Catholics, to the people that that are that are following, you know, some kind of religious story, your testimony is going to blow them away. If someone says, "I'm a Muslim man," I love to testify about how Jesus Christ is performing miracles in my life. I'm not going to be put off by it. You know, I'm telling you right now, Muslims are hungry for the reality of God. I've witnessed to, to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Catholics when we were on the streets of, of, of Chicago, 25 years I was in Chicago. We went witnessing all the time. You know what, Catholics, they're aware of God. They're aware of Jesus. They know they need a Savior, and they're lost. And not all of them, but I mean the vast majority of them. Man, when you begin to testify how God is moving in your life and how God is answering to prayers, man, Catholics, they're prime. They're ready to make Jesus the Lord of their life and not just part of their religion. So again, I want to encourage you to really think about it. And you know, if you could add to your testimony a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, a healing miracle when you're talking to that person, oh, I got news for you. You're going to make impact in people's lives. Well, I have a list here of do's and don'ts. We don't have time today to get into all that. In some of our, our longer teachings, you can find that, or even if you, if you write in, I'll send you that via email. I want to encourage you, learn to share your testimony because it's your story. You're an eyewitness of what God's done. It's your first-hand account. It's unarguable, and it will inspire people to believe. And lastly, lastly, let me just say this to you. When the Apostle Paul, in the second half of the book of Acts, is in front of King Agrippa and Felix and all these people, what does Paul share? His testimony. When you get your chance to minister to someone, it is important that you preach the gospel to them. But what's going to set that gospel presentation up is your story of why you believe what you believe about God. It is your firsthand story of what you've experienced. Don't ever downplay that. 
you Christians that have been walking with God, some of you, your entire known life, even from a little boy or a little girl, you've been walking with Jesus. I think your testimony is much greater than mine. Don't sell yourself short. Think of all the times God's come through for you. You've got something good to say to people. Hey, listen, thanks for the opportunity today to share this lesson with you. I hope that you'll continue to study with us how to share your faith more effectively. This first evangelism manual is just that. It's evangelism manual number one. I've already got two and three set up. I want you to know God is going to use you to win souls. If you ask the Lord, like it says in Psalm 2 8, Father, give me the lost as my inheritance. God will anoint you and empower you, and he'll use you to win lost souls. God bless you as you get out there and share the love of God with hurting people.